How many of you are familiar with this? The good old busted probe tip. So we've broken a couple of these now in the shop and one thing I've learned about being a high school shop teacher is that kids break things and it gets expensive because when I went online to find out how much that tip cost, whoo, was I uh, not impressed. Um, and it dawned on me, this might be too expensive to use. Don't get me wrong, my students know how to use edge finders and stuff, but this is uh, just nice to have. So, went online, got onto the Google, and I discovered John Grimsmo's video about how to make your own probe tips. And uh, I was a bit concerned because I don't have tools like John has um, for doing fancy knives and stuff, uh, titanium and whatnot. So uh, I chatted with him and kind of came up with the conclusion that maybe I could, maybe I couldn't uh, mill out a um, hole in some three millimeter ball bearings. So I'd pretty much given up on making my own probe tips and was ready to just order some. And then in class one day, I had a student go, hey, uh, I need to go to the bathroom because my nose ring just fell out. And that got me thinking, hmm, body jewelry has little round balls and they're threaded. So again, got onto the Google and I found these. So these are three millimeter replacement balls I got 10 pieces off of the internet, off of eBay I believe, maybe Amazon, but I think it was eBay. And I got them for like five bucks, so super cheap, We're talking like almost 50 cents a, a probe tip almost here. And so they're three millimeter, they're 14 gauge, which means the hole is threaded 1.6 millimeter. Uh, and 1.6 millimeter is fairly small, it's about the same size as the original probe tip. So then I came up with, okay, I don't have any carbide like John had on the internet, uh, on his video, so I thought to myself, what can I do? And then it occurred to me, what do I have that's 1 16th of an inch, it's fragile, and I have lots of it, because kids break it all the time. So I wandered over to the good old welding booth, and this is what I found. My tungsten carbide electrodes for TIG welding. They're darn near as fragile, they're slightly stronger than the original rod. I did some tests, but they break at almost the same. It's 1 16th, which you'll notice, 1.6 millimeter. And uh, now they're not threaded, of course, but I've got a way around that. And every time kids go and sharpen electrodes, they end up breaking them. So I got lots of little pieces kicking around. So. Then I went over to my my uh, fastener thing and uh, found my button head cap screws, M4 by 0.7 millimeter. They're 15 millimeters long, but that's okay. I have hacksaws and students that need projects, so we shorten one down, we drill it out, and what we end up with. After a little bit of work and super glue, pretty darn accurate probe tips. It was only out by five thou once when I put my dial indicator on it in the spindle and uh, was pretty quick to dial it in. I'll show you that in a little bit. But right now, why don't we make some? So, I'm not going to bore you with the whole shortening of screws, okay? I I'm pretty sure that if you're watching this video, you know how to either purchase screws the right length or um, you can do the same thing all right but what I'll do is uh, I'll take you over to the lathe now and we'll drill the hole out just like we see here just in case you're unfamiliar with you know how could I do that of course you could use your mill but I have a lathe so I'm gonna do that really darn quick All right, well, we're over here at the uh, Harrison M300 lathe, uh, best lathe in the shop. Love en English engineering. And we're just gonna throw one of these in the chuck. I'm not gonna be too concerned about damaging the threads. So I'm gonna actually chuck it down below where I'm gonna cut it. And 
bring up our 1 16th drill bit and uh, let's crack on. There we go, one hole drilled. All right, let's head back to the bench. Okay, so now that we've got our screw drilled and good to go, we should find that uh, we can get our carbide piece to fit in there. There we go. And then we'll just super glue that in in a little bit. Right now we need to prep the ball. So one of the things I found with these things is they're just, well, the rod isn't threaded, right? So they're not going to fit. But there's a really easy way around that. So let's grab one of these. Really easy to lose these suckers, so be careful. Okay, so what I found, so, if I, so I've got two pieces of walnut here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sandwich this in between. I sort of got an already a little spot there from the last time I did it, and then drill them out. Easiest way I found to do this was just to stick this onto the end of a pencil, and then I can put it in between there, and then grab this, and then now I'm and now I can take the drill to it. And these are pretty soft, so it'll be fairly easy to do that. And we'll just kind of realign it a little bit. All right, so let's take it over to the vise and um, put it in there. Okay, so we're back here at the vise. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to Try and squish this in here very carefully. And it likes to roll when you tighten it up. But once you get it snug, you're not gonna have much problem. Let's see if we can get a closer shot of that. So there we go. So now we got it in the base. Let's go ahead and drill it. Got my trusty drill here with my 1 16th drill bit, and I'm just going to drill it out. Sometimes you need to tighten it up a little bit more. But that is it. Just gonna take my rod here and just see if it fits in there. Yep. All right. So I'll take this out. Then we'll go back to the bench. Okay. So let's pull this apart. And there we go. We have our. Let me see if I can. Drilled out, and, and it fits on to the end here. Now, it's a bit all wonky right now because it's not pushed on properly, and um, but we're going to clean that up. We're going to get it all fitting just right. So I'm going to leave that there. Next thing is to decide how long we want to make the tip. Okay, so I've been making them about an inch long. I figure, you know, that's probably about the right length, but why don't we make one that is, what do we got here? This is, oh, it's just about an inch and a half. So let's just go with that. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the uh, tool grinder and we're just going to put a slight chamfer on each end so it goes into the uh, holes we drilled uh, easily. And then that's pretty much it. So let's head over there now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chuck this up into my, uh, my drill. This is how we sharpen our carbide, um, our tungsten for uh, TIG welding. So, um, I know this isn't carbide like what John used, but like I say, it's, it seems to be just as fragile and it works just fine. So, I'm just going to spin this while I spin the uh, thing there and just put a little chamfer on there. So that'll be the end that goes into the bolt. And this will be the end that goes into the ball because it doesn't have that paint on it. It seems to be interfering. And there we go. Just knock the edge off just to make it a little bit easier. All right, so let's sit back and put this together. So in between uh, the lathe and grinding that and drilling the hole in the ball and coming back to the bench here, I just went and took this over to the bench and, and I hacksawed it, cut it off. I figure no one needs to see me use a hacksaw. All right, and I deburred the end and uh, one thing I like to do is I've been putting the, just threading it into and chasing it into a die and uh, doing this on camera and looking through the viewfinder and actually doing it are two different things but anyway you don't need to see me thread this on a die but I just chase the thread so I know it'll go into the, uh, the probe nicely one thing I can do is I can check it check the probe make sure that uh, It'll actually fit, so take out the busted one and put this one in and threads in nicely, so we are good to go. So what I like to do, in the, the few that I've made, it seems uh, the best solution is to glue the rod into the screw and then onto the ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a pair of needle nose pliers to hold this just because I don't want to super glue my fingers. I'm going to take my a super glue um, home bond regular strength and one thing I noticed that worked best is to uh, a little dab will do you but I put it onto the rod not into the hole I don't know why, it just seems to work better. So put some on that rod and then into the hole. And then when it clicks in, there we go. Step one of the assembly done. So let that take a few seconds to cure and then we'll come back and we'll do the, the ball. In the meantime, I'll load it up into the uh, pliers using the pencil method again. Seems to work the best. Okay, so now we're back. It's been set and a few moments later. And I just want to make sure that this thing's going to fit in there. Fits quite nicely. So same thing. I'm going to just add a little bit of super glue to the tip. I don't want to add too much. Get it around. And then put the two together. And then I'm just going to tap it. Seems to make a difference. And then there we go. Now there's a little bit of glue on there. Just try and take that off. 
shouldn't use my fingers for this, but what the heck. It's not the first time I've glued them together, won't be the last, and there we go. Quick and easy to do. So what I'll do is uh, I'll chuck this up into the uh, into the, uh, the probe, and uh, we'll uh, see how close we are, and then we'll dial in if necessary. One thing I will do is just check and make sure that the uh, the tip is smooth. Sometimes I get a little bit of super glue onto the the ball itself, and uh, it feels pretty good. But what I've done is I've just chucked it up in the drill and just hit it with some 1500 grit sandpaper and that just knocks the glue off like that. And you got a nice tip. But it's pretty concentric. I mean, I don't see much of anything and that's what I wanted was something close. All right, I'll see you over at the mill. Okay, so here we are back at the mill. Got my tip installed. Let's put it in the mill. Now, to do this, I've kind of got this bit of a ghetto set up, but it's my only app dial indicator I have. I've just got it into the vise, and... I'm going to set this up. I'm going to set this up, I'll be right back, because it's really difficult for me to do this with the camera in the way. Okay, so here's our setup. Um, the blue tape is just to indicate where the screws are, makes it easier for me to adjust with the Allen key. Um, I've got my probe tip right up against, let me see if I can get that to zoom in. It is not, oh, there we go. It's going to focus. Nope. Yeah, right there. We, oh, we can just see them touching, kind of in that view. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you where it's at. So, at the uh, with the screw, with the wire coming straight out at me, I've zeroed it out. So I'm going to turn it so that the other screw is directly at me. And we're off by about four. But it jumped all the way over to five and then back to four again. And then if we go the other way to the other screw facing me, it's, it's way, way out. Okay. So this sucker's going to take some time to adjust. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to... I'm just going to cut back to when I've adjusted it because this could take a while or it could take no time at all. But who wants to see me spin the dial and adjust some screws? So, be back in a few. 2,000 years later. So, it's uh, 10 minutes later or something. And um, I think for a homemade probe, uh, with my lack of experience, I've done pretty good because we're well let me just adjust the uh, so it's right on zero okay so I'm gonna that's at uh, the first screw second screw we're off by almost a thou other way it's off by uh, a th almost a, a little over a tenth, almost a thou. So I'm going to uh, I'll play with it a little bit more but you guys get the idea. For a homemade uh, probe I think it's pretty darn good and uh, good enough for the work we do here um, I saw somebody once say on, on a video, um, it was on electronic tool setters. Um, you know, if you're, if you're looking for a tenth or, or uh, better accuracy, this probably isn't the machine for you. Don't get me wrong, I love how accurate this machine is. Um, I just, I doubt I'll be able to dial this in better than one thou. Um, and I'm 
pretty much there right now, so I think it's uh, pretty good. It's got a little high spot there when you pivot it. Um, I think there's probably a little piece of super glue or something there. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna polish it. I'm gonna readjust it. But uh, like I say, works pretty good for what it is. So anyway, um, thanks for joining. And remember that uh, pride and workmanship is always a factor. Twenty minutes later. So, addendum, a little more tweaking, and. I've got it pretty much, that's perfect that way, and so we're talking tiniest little bit off, like that's, that's, how much better can that be? Anyway, thanks for watching.